Oh yeah, oh man, that one's nice. Ooh, look at that one. He is gorgeous. Man, that would look so good in my tank. Please don't add her to your tank. <laughs> A oh, big howdy howdy to all of my fellow and future hobbyists out there. My name is Matthew, I'm your BRS beginner guru, and all we're gonna do right here, right now, is give you our list for the top 10 worst beginner fish. Before we start out with the list, I only have one disclaimer today, which actually is pretty good for me. There are exceptions to all of these rules. If you have your heart set on one of these fish, you can absolutely do that. But any one of these fish on this list is on this list for a reason. And usually because by adding them to your tank, that means there's a lot of other things that you can't put in your tank. The second caveat, didn't I just say I was only going to give you one caveat? But the second caveat is size. A lot of these fish are also on here because they require a really big tank. And of course, a beginner can do a really big tank. Just most beginners don't have a lot of money to spend on a brand new 120, 180 gallon system. So a lot of these fish need that larger system and for that reason, make it onto the list. Starting off our list with the 10th worst beginner fish is actually any sort of super aggressive or predator fish. We're talking things like lionfish, triggerfish, eels, sharks, rays, frogfish, or anglerfish. Starting off with lionfish, they are absolutely gorgeous, although their spines are super toxic. There are some dwarf species out there that you might be able to put in your tank, but as a beginner, I just tend to stay away from them, number one, because they will eat your other fish, and number two, if you're not careful, you could get hurt by them. Then you have the trigger fish, which I love, and I will try to find this footage for you. When I mistakenly bought a trigger fish, put them into my 40 gallon breeder quarantine tank and then watch that trigger fish attack and eat my other fish, which then I quickly <laughs> remove the trigger fish. Trigger fish also need a really large space, but they are super aggressive and they are predator fish. So they will likely eat a bunch of smaller fish you put in there. Same thing for eels. Now there are some dwarf species that you could add to a tank with a bunch of larger fish, but on the whole, eels need a very large system and you have to design the tank completely around them, including their habitat. You also have to feed them large meaty foods, and if you put a lot of other fish in there, they may disappear one by one. Sharks and rays, this one should be pretty obvious. They're awesome, they're awesome, but they require such a large tank that they are not beginner friendly. And lastly, our frogfish or any kind of anglerfish. These are those really cool fish, especially the anglers that dangle that little thing off of their head as a little fishing lure and then consume an entire fish in one gulp that is faster than the naked eye can see. Super awesome fish and you can totally have them in a beginner tank if that is your only fish because they will eat fish, sometimes even fish that are larger than themselves. Moving on to our worst beginner fish, number nine on the list are angelfish. Now there are some exceptions, for example, the smaller coral beauty angelfish is hit or miss with corals. But the main reason I put these fish on this list is because they do eat corals. And I would say most beginners at some time, unless they know they only want a fowler tank or a species specific tank, are going to add corals to their tank. And angelfish will look at that brand new $250 torch coral and just think it's a snack. So stay away from angelfish as a beginner and as you learn more, then maybe there are certain species you can add in with certain kinds of corals. Worst beginner fish number eight on the list, lish. Worst beginner fish number eight on the list are cowfish. These are those yellow box fish, and they are so awesome because their personality is fantastic. You can see videos all over the internet where these fish will come up to their owners and they'll splash them and they will take food directly from your hand. Super personable, but they can get huge. And if you see one of your LFS and it's like this big, uh-uh. They can get so large that you need a huge system. I'm not even sure how much you need, but we're probably talking a minimum of 180 gallons, probably even larger than that, which puts it a little bit out of the price range for most beginners out there. Worst beginner fish, number seven, are any type of puffer fish. We're talking any of the larger puffer fish or even the smaller tobies. I have a toby, I finally got a toby. It took me so many years to get this toby and I built this tank, this Fowler tank over here, specifically for a toby. And that means 
no corals. Many toby fish, for example, will consume your corals. There might be some that they won't, but there are others that they will. Now, while tobies are also small, they can also secrete a toxin from their bodies. So they require a larger tank. This tank over here is approximately 70 gallons in total water volume, and that's pretty close to the minimum size you need for a toby. Now, other puffer fish species get really, really large, and you can see them. Some of them are pretty small in your LFS, but if you've ever gone snorkeling in Hawaii, man, sometimes they can get gigantic. So you need a huge system, probably at least 180 gallons, maybe even more than that. And for that reason, they are not necessarily a great beginner fish. The sixth worst fish on our list is going to have some vehement disagreement, but I'm gonna put it on the list and I'll tell you why I'm adding it to the list. Tangs. Whoa, I know, I know, don't, don't like jump down my throat and say what an idiot I am, I get it. Some tangs are fantastic, and tangs in a larger system are absolutely fantastic. There's really two main concerns with tangs while I put them on this list. Number one, tangs need a large tank. You can get some baby tangs that might be able to go into a 50, 60, 70 gallon tank, but as they grow, you're probably gonna need a minimum tank side of 120 for even one single tang. The second consideration for tangs is some species of tangs can be really aggressive and territorial. And there's a reason they're called surgeon fish because they have these surgical blades down by their fins that can whip and hurt especially other tangs. So yes, tangs are great additions if you have a larger system and if you add them at the correct time and the right species of tang so they don't interact with each other in a negative way. But because they need a big tank and because you have to be careful which ones you add, I'm gonna add them to the list and say they're one of the worst beginner fish out there. I know you're gonna hate that. Put a comment down below, tell me why I'm wrong. I'm willing to be wrong. If you're gonna build a 120 gallon tank plus, then by all means consider putting a tang in there. And the worst beginner fish, number five on the the list is the one I actually have right over here, but that's gonna have to wait till next time. We'll put a link to it somewhere over here as soon as we're finished. And as always, everybody, thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.